Hey guys, this is Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. So one of you guys actually suggested that I make a video on the types of security alerts that I get on a day-to-day -day basis as a security analyst. And I didn't know anyone would be interested in this kind of video, but hopefully it will be somewhat interesting or helpful to you guys. For those of you who may be trying to get into a security analyst role or even an SOC analyst role. But yeah, here it is. So I kind of label them into different types of tickets that I get. Um, but sometimes it's kind of hard to label a certain type of ticket if I only get them like once every few months or so. so there's probably about 10 types of tickets at a high level that I get on a regular basis. And the first one I wanted to start with was just your standard security alert. So these are just going to be typical things like if someone reset something or someone logged in um, somewhere or sometime that maybe they weren't supposed to, or maybe someone logged in from a country that wasn't expected or an IP that wasn't expected. And these are going to vary definitely by the type of employer that you have. A lot of times these are set by you know, whatever policies that you have. So if your company wants to see who's logging in at 4 a.m. during non-typical work hours, then they may set a time for that or an alert for that. So while these aren't necessarily, you know, 100% that there is a security issue going on or that there is actually something malicious that is happening in your environment, um, it's just some things you kind of alert yourself to look into if, if your team set it up as an alert. And it's probably something that you want to dig into when you see it pop up. The next one is incident response type tickets. So we actually have a team that manages a lot of this outside of my current team. My team isn't going to be the first team that jumps into action, but for the most part, we do get those alerts. So when an incident is started, then we'll look into them and then we'll be able to look into more information, maybe hop on the call, maybe provide insight if possible. I don't, actually, on my team, I think I'm the one that has the least amount of experience with incidents and incident response in general. So typically I have a lot more to learn from those sessions than, than when it comes to information or things that I can contribute. But for the most part, it is a really interesting experience, especially when you go into those P0s and P1s that are basically like priority one or priority zero incidents that are very severe and you know, all alarms are going off. This is like the most important thing that people need to focus on right now. Those are the kinds of incidents that are really, really interesting to kind of look into and kind of sit in on those calls and learn more about. And the next one is external security alerts. Um, so this one isn't internal to your, to your company's environment, I guess. For example, if there's some kind of new bug or new vulnerability that's been filed, um, we get alerts for that. And this is something that you can subscribe to as not needing to have a company. You can subscribe to many different security alerts out there if you wanted to. This could be from different security blogs and this could also be from official government organizations that allow you to sign up for their email newsletter to get these alert notifications. So maybe it's more so like security notifications rather than security alerts since there isn't always going to be a to-do that's necessary because sometimes the alerts that they send out are very broad and they may not even apply to your environment or to the technology that you have in your company. So for the most part, they are kind of like a look into them and if they are if they do apply, then do something about it. For example, if it's a patch, if it's reaching out to another team, if it's disabling something, if it's looking into something, basically a lot of different things that happen. And of course, just the typical, this does not apply to us and close the ticket. The next two I'm gonna talk about together and they are security reviews and no, actually I'm gonna talk about them separately, um, security reviews. So let's say there is a new thing that is happening that is really cool and booming in your company. Maybe it's a new product, maybe it's a new process or something, and maybe it's in your security policy to review those things. So when a new feature that is very major comes up in your product or a whole new product in general, then maybe there's some kind of security review process that your company goes through and you follow that procedure. So these don't happen that often unless you're working for a startup and you know, you're just constantly going through security reviews of new features or of new products. But for the most part, I don't think that these are going to be happening every single day, maybe on a weekly basis, maybe monthly, um, but definitely not going to be on you know, multiple times a day or even once a day. So it also depends on the way that your company, your team is set up when it comes to the security requests. For example, there may be certain tickets that only certain people touch. That was the case for one of my previous teams where if a certain email came in that had to do with XYZ, then, then one of my teammates was officially going to be the person who answered to those emails. And I knew I didn't have to do anything when those types of emails came in. While on the other hand, if a specific type of email came in to our inbox, then I got those emails or I basically handled them when they came in. So it really does depend on how your team is set up to function. Um, you may also just have, you know, anyone takes any ticket or maybe it's assigned to everyone in a round robin. So it really does depend, but my team personally, 
we kind of work on every ticket um although some people have more experience with tickets than others but i do think the security review tickets are probably one of the most interesting to kind of go into because you do learn a lot about your products and new features of course you're kind of like on the cutting edge because you're getting to review them before maybe even the public sees them or other end users and the next thing is pocs so this one is more so if let's say someone reports some kind of bug or vulnerability and you have to go in and check to see if it is legitimate or check to see if it actually affects you but it's always nice you know as a company as a product to get those kinds of vulnerability reports kind of like from your end users or from your community or anyone else who's using your product to be honest because it shows that someone you know cares or someone's out there some companies have bug bounty programs or different ways to kind of engage that part of their user base that actually cares about reporting these kinds of bugs and vulnerabilities or maybe you just have you know some kind of online form and you can just type in a vulnerability or any bugs that you found but when those tickets come in you usually have to do some kind of poc or proof of concept and check to see if this is legitimate or if it actually affects your company which again this can depend and in terms of technicality it can really vary between how technical the problem is if you're looking for a specific vulnerability how old it is if you have to write custom scripts if you have to use custom technology or learn how to use a certain tool so yeah i would say this one is also probably one of the more vague types of tickets that you may get um and again i'm a security analyst i'm not an soc analyst so i get lots of different types of tickets i guess for socs it could be kind of seen as like a false positive and sometimes those are the case for tickets like these yeah definitely another thing to note and the next thing is scan reports and results so let's say your company gets recurring vulnerability scans on a regular basis or maybe you get like a pen test done every quarter or maybe you get a I don't know you, you do code scans and you get a recurring report every few weeks or every few months or every month so those are the kinds of things that may also come to your security inbox and there may not always be an action taken on these but there may be it really depends on the types of vulnerabilities that are found or maybe there's like new things that were added maybe a new server popped up so it really does depend on what the report says but i think that's also another very interesting one that comes in because it kind of lets you dig a little bit deeper into what's going on in your actual environment and the servers you have the technology you have the different assets that you have across the board and those are probably going to be happening at least on a more regular basis than than a security review ticket for example or a even a pen test pen tests usually aren't that often you're probably not getting a pen test every single week unless you have a huge budget and you really want to but for the most part pen tests are probably going to be maybe every year maybe every quarter even uh or maybe just every time you have like a new big feature that's added and you want to test it out those are probably like the main times you would get a pen test um just to stay compliant for example or even a red team assessment if that's something that your company has budget for i think that's definitely a very interesting one um those are usually more long term and, and not everyone knows that a red team assessment is going on compared to a pen test so it, it definitely adds that level of security or like testing your actual controls security controls as well as your security staff another thing is phishing and user-based alerts so these are kind of like a little bit similar to security alerts that you might get from your user when it comes to vulnerability reports but this is more so from a different type of user this may just be from a user that um, isn't necessarily technical or they may be technical but they're not sending you you know a vulnerability report about the findings that they found and the breadcrumbs to recreate it and things like that screenshots but they're kind of like general security alerts like phishing attacks for example if they got a phishing email or if they clicked on a phishing link or if they enter their you know user credentials into a fishy website and they just want to let you know then you can take actions accordingly based on your company's security policy so those are also another type of security alert that comes in um and phishing is definitely a huge huge area that you probably will see a lot of alerts from and i think that is all of the alerts that i've kind of categorized out in broad categories um obviously again not every company is going to have these kinds of alerts your company may have alerts that you may not see anywhere else 
so it really does depend like what sector you're working in the types of alerts that your company is tracking what's important to you guys as metrics to track in general as well as just tickets and security events but hopefully this did give you an idea of what to expect maybe on a regular basis and tickets aren't the entire thing that i work on um i also have long-term projects and professional development as well as meetings that take up my day on a regular basis so tickets are still a very big part of you know the times i spend on my job but they are also not the end all be all they're not the only thing that i work on oh and i also forgot one but it is requests from different teams but maybe it's answering security questions for a vendor for hr for a client there's just so many different teams that may have questions about our security posture or different reports or different things that may pop up on a regular basis so these are also going to be a pretty common form of tickets at least from what i've seen and i know there are many other types of tickets that we get but these are kind of like the broad categories i've seen in the year or so that I've worked in my current role as a security analyst and they're also the ones that we probably get on the most regular basis or so. Um, so hopefully this was even remotely interesting to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to the person who actually suggested that I create this video. Hopefully it was interesting or helpful to you guys and let me know in the comments below if there's any other type of security ticket or things that you work on. If you're working as a security analyst or maybe even a personal project that you've been working on on the side. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.